that has redeemed us and made us his own. It is Christmas Eve, Sunday, December 24th, 2023. And our theme for this Christmas season is good news of great joy. And today, of course, the great joy is simply the fact that a Savior has been born for us. May God bless us as we worship that Savior this evening and praise him. We will be doing that in a service called Lessons and Carols tonight. We will read a number of lessons from Scripture and also sing a number of Christian Christmas carols that bring to mind the wonderful truths of God's Word about our Savior, Jesus. We'll begin then our evening of service of Lessons and Carols with number 338, On Christmas Night All Christians Sing. Please stand. Dear people of God, in this Christmas season, it is our duty and delight to hear again the message of the angels and in heart and mind to go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us, the Christ child lying in a manger. Let us read and learn in Holy Scripture the story of the loving purposes of God from the first days after our fall into sin to the glorious redemption brought to us by this holy child. But first, let us pray for people all over the world who would delight with us to know the good news of Jesus Christ and who would join with us in singing his praises. Let us pray for the people of the South Bay and for all those in our congregation. And because this would please our Lord, let us remember in his name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry and the oppressed, the sick and those who are sad, the lonely and the unloved, and the elderly and the little children. We especially remember all those who do not know the Lord Jesus those who do not love him, and those who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Finally, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us in heaven, who live in greater light than we, that, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, who died in faith, and who live before the throne of God and praise him each day in his temple, we confess that we are united with them as we are united with one another. We pray for all of these people in the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
Please be seated. We continue with O Come All Ye Faithful, number 354. Our first lesson is recorded for us in Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 to 15. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden. And I was afraid, because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman 
and between your offspring and hers, he will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. The word of the Lord. Creator of the stars of night, your people's everlasting light, O Christ, Redeemer of us all, we pray you hear us when we call. In sorrow that the ancient curse should doom to death a universe. You came to save our ruined race with healing gifts of heavenly grace. When earth drew on to darkest night, you came but not in splendor bright. Not as a king, but as the child of Mary, virgin mother mild. At your great name, majestic now, all knees must bend, all hearts must bow, all things on earth with one accord. Join those in heaven to call you Lord. To God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, three in one. Praise, honor, might, and glory be from age to age eternally. Our second lesson is recorded in Genesis chapter 22, verses 15 to 18. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies, and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. The word of the Lord.
Our third lesson from Isaiah chapter 9, selected verses. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Of those, on those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful. Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of His government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on, the thro on David's throne and over His kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The Word of the Lord. Our fourth lesson, also from Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 1 to 9. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will lie down with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together. And the little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together and the lion will eat straw like an ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The word of the Lord.
The fifth lesson, recorded in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 35 and 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. The word of the Lord.
Our sixth lesson from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken in of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. The word of the Lord. Our seventh lesson from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, 
a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had seen and heard, which were just as they had been told. The word of the Lord. Dear friends, it wasn't that long ago, so I think you'll remember it. The days that we lived under the shadow of COVID-19 pandemic. Those were difficult days. They were filled with a lot of fear and sadness. People lost their jobs. The prices kept rising. There were people who had nothing on the shelves that they could buy. Supplies were lacking. Some people even lost loved ones to death. We had to wear those masks and had to distance from one another. Even students couldn't go to school. Some of them couldn't even graduate. It was tough. Those days were difficult, distressing. There were times when people were rioting and clashing with one another. There was anger and frustration. And if you watched TV at all during that time, all you saw pretty much was bad news. It was depressing. That's when a man by the name of John Krasinski, actor, director, writer, married to actress Emily Blount, began to think that people needed to hear some good news. And so he started a YouTube channel with that very name, Good News, Some Good News. And he tried to share on that station good people, things that were being done that were good and wonderful, that would make people feel good. Did people need to hear some good news? Well, the evidence is in the fact that he had 72 million followers and 2.58 million subscribers. There's no doubt people like to hear some good news. And dear friends, there's no greater news than the news that the angels gave to the shepherds. Tonight, let's listen in and hear some good news. But you know what? Those shepherds were, first of all, afraid they were going to hear some really bad news. Just consider the shocking situation they found themselves in. They were outdoors under the stars. It was nighttime. It was dark out, except for maybe a glow from their, their fire that maybe was fading and maybe the stars in the sky at night. And they were already a little bit jittery because they had their ears tuned carefully, listening for wolves and bears that might attack them or their flock. They were awake they were watching and guarding. And then suddenly, there was an angel standing right next to them. And the glory of the Lord blinded them as it turned their darkness into a time that looked like it was sunshine. How would you feel if you had been those shepherds? Well, we don't have to wonder because Luke tells us. Literally, he says, they feared a great fear. This wasn't just a little bit of trembling. This was a terror that was in their souls, deep-seated. Wouldn't you have feared a great fear? After all, why had this angel just appeared to you? Was this it? Was this judgment day? Was that angel about to show you how you were going to be punished justly for all of your sins? 
Wouldn't that have been one of the things that those shepherds would have been thinking about? Is it something that we think about? Do we think about the day that God is going to come in judgment against this world? Or do we kind of think all the time, oh, that's, that's too far off. I don't need to worry about that. Or do we live every day as if it might be today? Are we confessing our sins? Are we repenting of the sins that we have done today? What sins are we still living in? What sinful habits are we still fighting against? What new sins might we be doing? What things that God has asked us to do are we neglecting because we have too much to do or it's not important to us? What if God would see that and say, today's the day. Your time is up. Have you been doing the things that I asked you to do? Do we fear sometimes a great fear? After all, you can't hide anything from God. God knows all the stuff that still causes our conscience to be guilty. God knows all the things that we hide from other people. There's a reason that we don't want Google and Alexa spying on us. There's a reason that we don't want Allstate to be driving with us and going wherever we go in our cars. Because the secrets of our hearts are heavy. The thoughts that no one else knows are not good. If God were to look into our hearts, what would he see? If we thought COVID-19 was bad, we can't imagine what might happen to us if God would judge us for our thoughts and our actions. And if that was the end of the story tonight, there wouldn't be any good news. Because there simply isn't any good news for those who are rebelling against God. God is a just and holy God. He punishes sins. And those who defy him, those who disobey his commands and ignore him, they will find judgment to eternal damnation. So there's a little bit of good in us fearing a great fear when we think about God's judgment. If we proudly and boldly and arrogantly think that we are good enough for God, that we are going to be able to make it on our own to heaven, that we don't have to do anything more than try hard because God doesn't take sin seriously anyway. Those shepherds needed to hear some good news that night, and they did. Because while they were fearing a great fear, the angel said, don't be afraid. Why not, they might have said. Why shouldn't we be afraid of the divine judgment as this holiness of God, the glory of the Lord, wraps itself around us? We have no excuse. We have no defense. We can't pay the price for our own sins that it demands. In short, there's nothing that we can do. Why shouldn't we be afraid? The angel told them why. Because I come to bring you good news of great joy which will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born for you. He is Christ the Lord. There's the reason why we don't have to be afraid, not because of what we do, but because of what our God has done for us. He sent us a Savior. In fact, He is our Savior. The Son of God, the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Christ, came to this world for those shepherds that night. And he came to Bethlehem to be the Savior that they needed. But the angel said, this good news is for all the people because we needed it too. We need good news. We need to know that we have a Savior. Just imagine for a minute that you're on a, in a submersible and you've gone way deep 
down beneath the surface of the ocean. And while you're way down there, all systems fail. And your submersible is now down on the bottom of the ocean floor. And there are no lights, so you're in the dark. And your oxygen is going away. And it's getting colder by the minute. And you fear a great fear because you know that your death is near. But then suddenly, there's a light, a brilliant light in the porthole. And you look out and there's another submersible and they've come to save you. You're not going to die that horrible death at the bottom of the ocean. And what do you do? You're filled suddenly with an overwhelming joy that floods into your heart. Peace, hope. And you could just sing. You could just jump for joy. You could hug everybody around. Dear friends, that's our joy tonight because God has sent us a Savior. All the terrible things that could have happened to us because of our sins, they aren't going to because Jesus has come. The Messiah, the Anointed One, has come into this world where we were gasping for spiritual breath and He has brought to us salvation. And the glory of God, which is His salvation of all people, his glory shines into our life with the brilliant light of life. And it's so much better than that submersible because Jesus is also our substitute. He perfectly did what we can't and don't do in our lives. And he faced the horrible death that we deserved. And he paid the enormous price for sin that we needed to pay. And because Jesus did that for us, God the Father no longer holds his anger against us. God the Father now, as our judge says to us, not guilty, innocent. And of all things, he looks us in the eye and says, you are my child. All the sin, all the guilt, all the failures, all gone. That's what Jesus did for us. He saved us. That's our great joy today. To us, a Savior is born. That's some good news, isn't it? And so in this world that's got so much bad, that's got so many things that bother us and trouble us, there is a place that we can find peace. Peace because we know that our God for Jesus' sake, loves us. Peace because we know that for Jesus' sake, we are forgiven. Peace because it doesn't matter who we are. It doesn't matter who others think we are. The only thing that matters is who the Lord of the heavens and the earth think we are. And he calls us his child. He loves us. And he has something grand planned for us. So when... Your body is racked with pain or when you have troubles in your life or distress in your heart and even death touches your body, there's one thing that can't be touched and that's your joy because you and I are going to be where those angels are. We're going to be with our Savior in his paradise and there we're going to sing there we're going to shout and dance for joy because to you today, a Savior has been born. Amen.
our eighth lesson from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied. For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be re shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I, too, may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. The word of the Lord. Please stand. We stand because we're about to hear the great mystery of the incarnation, God in the flesh. As you hear this lesson, you will hear the word, the word, and that is a title for Jesus. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. 
Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own But his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The word of the Lord. Please be seated. This time, we'd ask you, if you haven't done so already, to take the connection card in your bulletin and fill it out. There are pens at the ends of each of the the pews that you can use if you don't have a writing utensil at your place. Members, you can just put your name down, but if you're a guest here, we'd appreciate it if you'd give us the information that's indicated on that connection card. 
Also at this time, we remind you that we have the great joy of Christmas in our hearts, which gives us the opportunity to say thank you for the joy that we have, and that you can do through the offerings that you give in the plate at the back of our chapel, or using the electronic means that are described in our worship folders. We'll take a few minutes now to give you time to write on the connection card. Don't forget to leave those cards on your pew at the pew when you leave this evening. At this time, we invite you to turn your candles on if you haven't done that already. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May he who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly fill you with such joy that comes from the forgiveness of sins and the hope of eternal life and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. We'll conclude our service tonight by singing Silent Night, Holy Night. This song was actually written on an evening when the organ at a church had broken down and there was no way to accompany the music, and so the music director went home that night and wrote Silent Night, Holy Night, and then used his guitar to play it the next day at the service. And so this evening we'll be singing it in that original way with guitar. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child. 
child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. Silent night, holy night, shepherds quake at the side, glory stream from heaven afar, heavenly sing Alleluia. Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. Silent night, holy Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from thy holy face, with the dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus, Lord, at thy Jesus, Lord, at thy Welcome again to you all to this worship service this evening. We're so glad you could join us. Don't forget that we have the festival service tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Hope to see you here again as we praise our Savior Jesus. There are refreshments downstairs. Time for us to talk and get to know each other. So please come on downstairs after the service um, and enjoy that. And a blessed and most Merry Christmas to you all. <laughs>